So what are customs and what is biblical? Well, what is biblical is what the text explicitly addresses or at least attempts to address. For example, if we think about the rules of the Sabbath in Judaism, there wasn't a list that said, these are the things you can't do on the Sabbath. The instruction was to rest on the Sabbath. Uh, there are a handful of stories of events in the Old Testament that show when the Sabbath is violated, but there's no section like the Ten Commandments that says, thou shalt not do this on the Sabbath. Um, uh, and so a custom developed in Judaism called the 40 less one that listed 39 things you're not allowed to do on the Sabbath as a way of giving people a sense of what's going on. Now, that was an attempt to articulate in specific what resting on the Sabbath was, but that also was a custom that was not biblical because those things were not explicitly laid out in the Bible for being uh, what rest on the Sabbath was. So sometimes it's hard to know when you're making an application that is an expression of what the Bible teaches or whether you're adding to what it is that Scripture teaches. And let me give you another example. Um, Jesus um, didn't wash his hands before some of the meals like the Pharisees and other church leaders had expected him to do, wanted him to do, and expected someone who was pious to do. But there actually is no instruction in Scripture that says that you need to wash your hands before a meal, not for the sake of hygiene, but for the sake of purity. But, the, but laws were created to make sure someone was pure that extended it beyond the way it was originally laid out. And Jesus was saying, in effect, when he, when he didn't do this, he was saying, you're going beyond the scripture here. This is more than what scripture asked for. I often say to my students, it's as wrong to make the Bible do too much as to make the Bible do too little. Liberals tend to make the Bible do too little, but some conservatives make the Bible do too much. And being able to distinguish those two things is important. Is it helpful to know what the customs are in order to understand what's going on in Scripture? And the answer to that question is obviously yes, that if you understand how people lived and the kinds of customs that they were engaged in when, they, uh, when they're doing something, you sometimes will actually understand more about the event. I'm going to illustrate, the, I call these cultural scripts. They're embedded in the text, and they aren't explained because the writer and the reader share the culture. But if you come from outside the culture, you might not know what's going on. So let me try one that I think might work in Scotland. We'll see. Okay? And this is an old illustration, so hang in there with me. If you don't get it, I'm going to explain it. Ian Botham marched to the crease to defend the ashes on behalf of the queen. Okay? That's a perfectly wonderful English sentence. In fact, it's a very English sentence. Okay? Now, someone in the United States reading that sentence, if they don't know anything about cricket, anything about the history of cricket, anything about test matches between, the, between England and Australia, would probably have no clue what that sentence was about. Not only that, if someone were learning English as a second language in Arabia, I could give them a dictionary. They could look up every word in that sentence, and they still would have no clue about what that sentence was about. But if you live in England, and if you are a sports enthusiast anywhere in the UK or anywhere in Australia, you know exactly what I've just said. Ian Botham, a famous captain of the England cricket team, marches to the crease of a cricket match in order to try and score runs in defense of the Ashes, which is the trophy between Australia and England in test cricket matches. And he's on England's side, so he's on the side of the Queen. All of that makes sense. Now, notice how long it took me to explain that. It's much easier to say Ian Botham marched to the crease to defend the Ashes on behalf of the Queen than to say all of that. That's a cultural script, and all that's embedded in what I say. If I understand that, I understand the context. If I don't, then I'm missing something. And the Bible sometimes has customs embedded within it that have certain expectations and understandings attached to them. If you understand what's going on, you get it. And if you don't, you won't. 
And in some cases, the scripture might explain what's going on to help you get the cultural script. For example, when Jesus rides into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey, you know, the passage in Zechariah is cited to show this is the way a humble king, you know, will present himself. Uh, then, then you get help. But there are a lot of cultural scripts in the Bible where uh, it's because we've studied the history and the culture of the Bible that we know what the cultural scripts are. And when you're aware of them, it, it illumines the passage and deepens the passage because you have a better sense of what's going on.